Hi everyone, today we're going to be making some beads with ultraviolet curing resin and some cute little bits of fruit inside them. So that'll be part one and I'll show you also how to make it into a bracelet. Part two, which I'll put you the link up here on the screen uh, at the end of this video. So part two, we'll be making the little pendants. Right, let's get going then. First thing you're going to need, obviously, is one of these little bead moulds. And as you can see, it's already got the little spike in it to make the hole in the bead for you. So one of those, and some ultraviolet resin. This is the one from Let's Resin that I use a lot. It's just the standard one, not an extra high viscosity one or anything like that. It's just the perfectly normal standard one. And the other thing we're then going to need is whatever you want to poke inside the beads and probably some tweezers because they're a devil to get in. So um, I'm going to need... I usually need about nine or ten beads to make a bracelet to fit me. I've got quite little skinny wrists, so I've got loads of these little bits of fruit, which is what's gone into these previous ones. So let's use those. So what we're going to do, we're going to part fill the little beads up with resin. Now there's a trick to this, and that is just pour it down one side. And we're going to get them about halfway full. If you just pour it down the one side of the little spike it will then not form like a big bubble on the top. Pour slowly and let it drop in. Yeah, if you if you get tempted to go all the way around, I did I did that when I was doing the other beads, those first ones, and I did find that basically I ended up with a big bubble on the top and it looked like it was full and it wasn't. Now we're only filling it about halfway up because obviously we're leaving room for some stuff in them. So I'm going to make four more of these little beads. And then uh, I've just got this overwhelming urge to stuff glitter in a couple. <laughs> I don't know why, I just have. So there we go. They're probably only about halfway full. Not too scientific. I'm only talking sort of roughly part way. Now, you'll notice I've got one glove on and one off. I didn't really want to get UV resin all over my hand. I don't think it's toxic. I've not had any reactions anyway. It's just horrible, messy stuff. But these bits are very fiddly. And if I, I'm finding that I need to sometimes have a hand with no glove on to do anything with them. So I'm just going to put in... You know, just, we haven't cured it or anything yet. I'm just putting some bits of fruit in. And I'm going to go for oranges and... It's oranges, kiwis, lemon, melon and all sorts. I put all sorts in these ones, this first one. So I'm just going to speed this up because all I'm going to be doing is stuffing things in to the little cavities. And then I'll put some glitter in the remaining two. Right, I'm back, and as you can see, I'm trying to get glitter to go into these. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's an easy way of doing it. Probably mixing it with the uh, resin first would have been the easier way. Anyway, some of it's going in. This glitter is Jack Frost from um, Glitter Stella. I'll put you the links for all this stuff below. There's so much nail art stuff out there, it's crazy. Even the glitter, this glitter was intended for nail art. I used to have spectacular nails, believe it or not, despite um, spending half my life messing about with cars. I used to have lovely nails in the winter when it wasn't car show season. Now, I just wreck my nails doing, oh, my hands generally, doing crafty stuff, of course. Right, there we are. Those are filled up as far as I'm going to go with stuff. So now I'm just going to pour some more resin in. Again, trying to keep to one side so I don't get that annoying bubble in the top. And I'm going to keep stopping and letting it settle because what I don't want is to get um, the annoying bubbles under the rim situation. 
you can poke around with a little micro brush or something after if you want to make sure you've not got any bubbles I mean to be honest I don't mind bubbles in the bead but what you don't want is bubbles on the edges uh, on the sides where it's going to spoil the look of your your bead bubbles inside can add a random bit of sparkle can't they now making wanting to make sure these are full and getting them full without overfilling them is a wee bit tricky especially when I've dumped a load of glitter in the top of the one and I can't see what I'm doing two rather not one so I'm just going drip at a time and letting it settle and then when it stops settling I'm going to go over the top with a cloth and wipe it off now these beads I'm going to turn them into a little bracelet I'm going to use some silver just silver plated probably um, silver coloured findings to join them now I'm going to poke these with a my little stick just want to make sure that the worst of the bubbles are out and then I'll wipe over the top this is the easiest way to, I've found to make sure it is actually full and I haven't just got a bubble on the top that's sitting on top of everything also this will mix the glitter in a bit And yeah, it looks like those are fine. So going across the top with a cloth, this is one of my wonder wipes. You can use baby wipes by the way. I just hate the smell of the things. <laughs> baby wipes would be gentler. One thing I would say, if you use baby products with your crafts, yes, they're nice and gentle, of course. But if you've got anything like latex moulds, I'm not sure how it behaves with silicon, but I think it might be the same. Um, baby oil degrades silicon. So don't use baby oil, thinking it'll be nice and easy to clean your moulds up with. Don't ask me how I know that, I just do. So there we go, we've just gone straight across the surface. And I've got glitter everywhere as usual. Now what you should be able to see, I hope you're still in shot because I have got you quite zoomed in. Yeah, you are. Um, you can see they're up to the surface. I can't tip it too far, obviously, but they're up to the surface. You can still see the little spikes sticking out though. So we're going to cure those. Get my ultraviolet light in here. And while those are curing, I'll tid tidy these up. I'll just show you the rest of them. So all sorts of little bits of fruit. Um, they're gorgeous, aren't they? I think they're made of polymer clay and then cut into little slices. Rather oh, adorable. I thought they'd be nice sort of in the summer vibe. And I'm going to put the glitter away because I just know it's going to end up everywhere if I don't. Right. I'll be back in a moment and that will all be cured up. I'm just going to sort out my jewellery making kit. So here we go, just turning them out, and there we have some adorable little beads. Aren't they cute? <laughs> By the way, now I've taken my gloves off, please excuse the state of my hands. I had a fight, I can, every so often I have a fight with a bottle of something, and it's always something black, and I end up with horrible manky nails. Right, let's introduce you then to the rest of the cast. So there's the two glittery ones. Aren't they sweet? <laughs> okay, now uh, the rest of the bits I've got here. Got some jewellery pieces out. These are the little toggle clasp. We have got some eye pins, not sure what length we'll need yet. Got some little silver beads. I hope those are going to be big enough. And some silver jump rings. 
So what we're going to do, let's try these ones first because they're short. Eye pins are so called because they have an eye at the top and a pin at the bottom. If I find my way into these, we'll be laughing. Very cheap to buy big packs of them, even if you go for sterling silver, they're not expensive. You can make your own if you're a dab hand with wire, of course. Let's just see if these ones are long enough. I think they might be. Now what I tend to do is just string them together with the eye pins. Now you could, of course, put them onto a piece of elasticated wire. You know what I'm going to need? Find a sticky mat. These will go everywhere. There you go, sticky mat. down you're off going off screen aren't you let's actually zoom out just slightly I've put the little silver beads onto a sticky mat because it'll just stop them sliding around here we go let's move up a bit and you can see what I'm doing there's the little beads so the idea is that you rather than use like elastic or something like that which of course you could you could make them look posh by doing this so you're just putting a little one of the these little silver beads in on each end because that will just finish it off neatly to be honest it'll sit into the little recess in the top and it'll just finish the little bead off nicely now we want to turn this into a loop like the other end is like the other eye is little trick to this if you haven't seen it on my videos previously first of all you want to trim the wire to about the thickness of your finger that's right, I do I tend to use my finger to measure it like so. And then you grab the end of the wire, as you can see just a little way up from the end of your pliers, depends how big you want the loop. And then you twist it round, right the way round, and then you let go of them. See it's one to one side like that now. So you're going to let go of them, you were like that, you're going to let go of them and just nip it back like so. And there you've centered your loop now I think that's a bit too long still because the little beads actually let's try slightly bigger beads I'm not I'm not happy with that let's try bigger beads I want to be able to see them so give me one moment what have I got Right, back, let's try these. Um, couldn't really find any really small silver beads and I think these are going to be bigger than what I want. However, what I did find was these, which are the most adorable little bead caps. You can see they're like an antique silver. Going to need quite a lot of them and I'll show you how they work. So probably going to end up with the little tiny beads again. Basically, they, they're to go either side of the little bead. So back with the tiny ones. Going to pick one up on my eye pin. I'm going to pop a little trim, a little bead cap on the big bead on and as you can see that's made a really cutesy little end to it so same here bead cap tiny seed bead and there you go isn't that cute hmm <laughs> right so where were we let's put our put our loop on again so grab the end twist it away turn it and just nip it back a bit and there you've got a neat little loop and then all you do is open it just slightly if you're opening it any further I would say twist it but we're just opening it slightly because you're popping the next eye pin on and you're closing it up with your pliers so there we go the first link in your chain right I'm going to speed you up again because it's just the same process over and over until you get the length that you want.
right I'm back um, and as you can probably see I'm getting close on long enough to be the bracelet to go around my wrist my wrists are quite skinny it's the only bit of me that still is now um, it just occurred to me while I've been joining these all up that I didn't introduce you to the pliers and the other bits and pieces some of the bits and pieces I've been using and what they're called so if you wanted to go and look for similar to use for yourselves now of course I am going to put all the links down below as usual um, but so you know what you're looking at the pins as I said they're called eye pins nice and easy because they have an eye on one end Okay, so those are eye pins. The ones that have got like a knobby bit on the other end, um, much like a, a sewing pin, then those are called head pins because they've got a head on them rather than an eye. So there you go. So these are eye pins. The tiny silver beads, they tend to call them seed beads, the really tiny ones. Um, you can get assorted versions of these and you can get them in another one. You can get them in sterling silver as well. So yes, those are these little guys here, these are seed beads. The little caps we've been putting on, as I said, they're called bead caps. I've seen them called spacers. There's various sorts. Now as you can see, even in this little selection I've got here, there's different designs as well. There's lots of different designs available of these. And they are, um, I think I found them under Tibetan silver. I have no idea what Tibetan silver is. It's not real silver, I don't think. It is just uh, like an antique finish silver that you can uh, get for jewellery findings. But I find it lasts quite well. Okay, so that's what the little... That's what the little bits on the ends are. I told you about the resin. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud now. I told you about the resin. Um, yeah, we're getting, we're nearly there now. Now these are jump rings. Now what I tend to do with these is just put one on both ends. At some point I've got these magnetised, I think, because they want to stick to my pliers. <laughs> you know, if you put something by a magnet, I have got some magnetised pliers, so I think they've been against those at some point. So I tend to put one on the end just like that, and then take another one. You can use the same one, it depends how much extra length you need on your on your bracelet and you can fit on the clasp now lobster clasps are good can I say don't probably use magnetic ones for bracelets because they tend to come undone these um, I can't remember what these are called but you've basically got a loop and then a bit that passes through it like a bar that holds it in place I'll look them up and I will put the link for you below again they come in loads of different sizes shapes and so on this is a really cutesy little pack that I've got um, I'll show you properly in a second made a bit of a hash of joining that up there we go I think I'm there there we are yeah look heart shape and then you've got a little arrow to go through it some of these are quite yeah this one's this one I think is going to be a nightmare to do up unless I put an extra long chain on it how long have I got here yeah so I'll show you what I mean by that now remember if you're opening a jump ring or a an eye pin normally you twist that is how you open it because then when you push it back you just twist it back and it doesn't distort it just make sure it's closed up nicely now I think this arrowhead clasp is going to be a bit of a nuisance so I'm definitely going to put two loops 
on this end at least. I might have to come back and put another. We'll see. I think lobster clasp ones are the best, but I can't find my pot of lobster clasp ones. These are more decorative, to be fair, so they do have that on their side. And there you go, we have a bracelet. And then what you do, to chew it up, you just put the little arrowhead th through there, and it's closed. So you've got an arrow and a heart, isn't that nice? <laughs> Now what I might do is make another another one of these beads and make a pair of earrings. But I did want to show you the ones that have just got that bit of glitter in. Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> Love those. So I should be doing something with them at some point. But there you go. The pliers was the other thing I wanted to show you because I've been using these throughout the video. The ones that we'd wrapped the eye pin round, they're round nose pliers. You can see why they're called that. Their noses are round. So wherever you just want to twist, those are perfect. Where you want to squash something, you want some flat pliers. Flat nose pliers, that's what I've always called them. I don't know if that's what they're called. You can see there's a springy thing here that pushes them back open as well. Makes them nice and easy to work with with all of these pliers. And then the other thing is some little wire cutters. Now these are girly jewellery size ones. You know, you can get away with using your kind of um, what you know, the ones you might use in your tool shed in your garage or whatever, but you won't. The trouble is, they probably won't be narrow enough. These are quite fine again, cheap as chip set of tools. I don't know where I got this set from, I've had them for ages, but I've just bought a new set, so I'll put you the link for the new set as well. That was because I couldn't find these. I'm always losing things, it's a nightmare. Anyway, there we go, we have one little bracelet, and I will pop that on and model it for you and do some photos. There we go. So if you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you would please to let me know, because then I'll know that you want me to make more like this. So if you'd hit that like thumbs up button down below, that would be marvellous. And if you haven't subscribed already, if you want to see more of these, please do subscribe because then I'll be able to let you know when I'll be releasing more videos like this and various other resin projects for you to have a go at. So thanks again everyone and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put, oh yes, and I'll put a link up here for the uh, part two, which is these. <laughs>